Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. Welcome to this quick inspiration series, episode one, where we'll be using contact paper and making some contact paper creations such as pouches, envelopes, tags, journaling spots, and more, and more. We will be working with clear contact paper or self-adhesive book covering. We will also use the non-see-through kind as well as the something in between, the slightly see-through kind. So hopefully you have some contact paper ready. This will be fun, it will be easy, so let's begin. I just want to quickly introduce this quick inspiration series. My idea is to have one extra video a week, hopefully where I share a quick little project idea that you can do in no time. All right, let's get started. We'll start with making some pouches. So this is really good to use up your book pages. All right, so you need two book pages and try to rip them up together, uh, rip them out of the book together. I'll tell you why in a moment. Sometimes they kind of stay together, sometimes they don't. In this particular case, they didn't stay together. So you don't have to rip them out together, but if they stay together, it makes this process easier. Okay, place them on your desk, grab your contact paper. We'll be working with see-through contact paper. You will need two pieces of contact paper to cover both the front and the back. So make sure to cut a little bit larger than your book page. So you can see how much extra I'm giving myself. Now I'm going to cut this large piece in two pieces. So again, I'm going to give myself extra. All right, I have my two pieces ready. Here's the first one. I just want to double check that it's completely covering my book page and perfect it is. Okay, now make sure these are aligned perfectly. One main issue with contact paper is that you can get bubbles and all sorts of stuff happening. So I will show you how you can minimize the risk of that happening. Okay, so first of all, uh, you can see how where the curl is. So I'm not going to try and apply it going against the curl. I'm going to go with the curl. I hope that makes sense. Once we start, it will make perfect sense. And now I'm not going to unpeel the whole piece. I'm just going to peel a little bit and just cut that top bit off. So now this is what we have happening. And I'm going with the curl. You see that? And now I'm going to place this on my some non-stick surface, which happens to be my desk here, slightly overlapping the book page. Here we go, place it down. And I'm gonna start smoothing from the middle here. So I've stuck it down to my desk and a little bit to my book page. And now you can see this, I'm gonna move that out of the way and slowly, unroll. I have tried using a ruler like this, but there's more chance of bubbles happening. So I'm kind of staying away from using the ruler and I'm just using my whole hand or just my finger like this and just gradually go all the way to the end. Perfect. Now I'm going to unpeel this from my desk and the other page sometimes comes up with it. Sometimes it doesn't, but if it doesn't, you can just align the second page on top, making sure that all the edges meet perfectly. Grab your second piece and repeat the process. And here it is. Now we have a little sandwich happening. What I'm going to do now is take it to my sewing machine and sew all the way, or not all the way, I'm not sewing the top. I'm just going to sew the three sides so that creates a pocket or a pouch like this you see if you don't have a sewing machine then you would grab your two book pages like this apply glue on the three sides leaving the top open pop the second book page on top make sure everything's aligned and go ahead and apply the contact paper in exactly the same way and here we have it i've sewn the three sides and now i'm going to go ahead and cut all of that contact or excess contact paper off. And this side that has the uneven ripped out book page, I'm going to trim that down so that I have nice straight edges. And here we go, a little pouch complete. Of course, you can use scrapbook paper, you can use any paper, doesn't have to be book page. Next, 
you can take it up a notch. So you've got your two book pages ready. You can add some washi tapes or translucent stickers. Anything that's really thin will do. You can add some stamping and really go to town with an embellishing. You can only perhaps embellish the front or if you wish, you can also embellish the back. It is completely and totally up to you how much embellishing you want to include. The main thing is that whatever you put on there, it has to be nice and thin, really thin. So stamps work really well and translucent stickers. And now when you have embellished your little pouch, you go ahead and apply the contact paper on both front and back. Sandwich is ready and pouch is ready to go. That looks really cool, really fun, really sturdy. One tip I can give you is when you're sewing, make sure to double stitch, uh, I mean back stitch here at the top so that your thread isn't unraveling. And in case if you're wondering, the sewing machine needle, I use universal needle and it's fine to go through contact paper, no problems whatsoever. A cool thing you can do with this sort of thing is let's say you have a journal, here's a little junk journal in the making, and then of course, I don't know, this is here at the front, I'm just gonna put it in. Anyway, that one doesn't fit. So let's say you want to include some ephemera in your junk journal that you're making or you're selling for the person or yourself to have on hand when you're working in your journal, and then you can find a page, it doesn't really matter, any page it can be at the front or at the back. Clip it in with a paper clip and what a fun little addition to a junk journal. Next, I wanted to show you some ideas on the pouches and then we'll move on to the envelopes. So you can see this one here, I've only pretty much done the same thing and I didn't do anything at the back. These are the first ones that I made and this is using the trans, uh, not translucent, what's the word? the see-through this this one is see-through but tinted contact paper so and you can see it's all scrunched up but once you apply it to your project no issues whatsoever and you can see when i do stamping it's pretty cool it shows through and i really love how that looks and i just love something about i'm tilting it so you can see that plastic there's something about it that just speaks to me and then this one here again just a little sticker nothing on the back this one here as you can see it's a large pouch so this is something that I would perhaps put at the front of a journal or at the back of a journal and then I have all of my bits and pieces in this large pouch. So that's pretty cool and hopefully your imagination is firing up right now with all the things you can do. Okay, here's another idea. It's exactly the same thing as what we've just done but what I did here, I mean you can see what I did there. In these condensed reader's digest books you get four pages of images and I love those pages so much so basically I just used those pages and you could have an image on one, one side and a book page on the other I love it all right that's the pouches done you can of course make those pouches with contact paper that's not see-through this is beautiful sparkly gold contact paper it's not looking very sparkly in the video but when I turn the lights on, it's sparkle galore. I love it. And then this kind of thing, this is like uh, for furniture. It's quite thick contact paper. So you can do this exact same thing, make pouches. But I thought it would be fun to make envelopes. And you can see this one I have also embossed. And of course, you can also do things like this is an envelope. This is also sparkly. See what I mean? You can really see that sparkle, especially in this black one. How cool. I mean, this is what it looks like in real life. So that can be an envelope like I just shown you. But instead of gluing it shut here and having it as, as an envelope, I use the book page that has an image on one side. This is a large book page from this book. And then, you know, some of these pages have images that cover the whole page. So anyway, that's the book in case you're wondering. But then I made it into like this flip down, opening up envelope, which kind of looks like a house here. Plenty of journaling space there. And then this also can be clipped into a journal. And then going along the same lines, I was supposed to make this into an envelope, but I realized that I did it upside down. So I made it into like a ephemera little, I don't know, something. So. It can serve the same purpose as a pouch. You just simply pop all of your bits and pieces in here, tags, whatever, and then 
you have this cool looking thing that you can go ahead and you know i mean where is the limit where's the end to creativity that we can explore with all of the embellishing and having fun right and then i also have a whole lot of this red contact paper which i am not loving and i've had this contact paper for over 11 years 12 years maybe 13 years and i just don't know what to do with it so here what i did is apply the contact paper to some cardstock a tea dyed cardstock and ran it through my embossing machine and it, this looks very very Christmassy it's a beautiful little thing to include in Christmas journals and it can be a journaling spot a little tag whatever a quote you can write a quote you can go ahead and do all sorts of stuff this is just sharing some ideas so let's do something with a non-see-through contact paper shall we I reckon we'll use this one and let's make what should we make an envelope and a journal cover all right grab your piece of paper it can be anything i'm using a book page and i'm gonna uh, do the exact same thing so we're just using one book page now going with the curl when i'm making a larger piece or if i'm working on a larger actually you'll see that next when i make a, a journal cover i use my whole hand and we smooth it down perfect get it off the desk and now i'm gonna trim off all this excess contact paper easy peasy make it into a little envelope shape make sure that crease is nice and crisp now if you don't have a sewing machine you can just glue the sides shut here and here and you can leave perhaps you know this as a rectangle or you can cut a point to make it look more like an envelope or you can really do whatever you want Maybe I'll do something like this. Okay, and now I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and sew all the way around, starting from the top here. I'll even sew down here, just because I like it, and then I'll go across the top there. And here we go, a little mini envelope is done. Pop a few little bits and pieces in there. Do a little fun spiral paper clip to keep it closed. And into your journal it goes just like that this journal is uh, in the embellishing stages so that's why there's barely anything in there but there you have it how cool does that look next i'm going to make a journal cover out of this tea dyed piece of I forgot what they're called and i'm going to trim the top and bottom off all right that's ready to go next i'm going to trim my contact paper down to size all right and now i'm not going to deny that this is going to be very difficult because we're working with a large piece of contact paper that's quite stiff and very very curled up curled up so let's see how we can make this work this is where the struggle begins when you're trying to unpeel and it's just all curly and all over the place so when this starts happening don't stress just you know follow the plan you're doing it the exact same way as the pouches and off we go this is where I was talking about the whole hand thing. So I'll just do this and perhaps use my other hand to pull this down. And lovely, there's no bubbles. Probably should have gone the other way. I would have liked these to be obviously horizontal, but it is what it is. All right, get rid of the excess. I'm going to fold it in half. It's not the prettiest contact paper, I will admit but we will make it work. And now, you know, I just love the look of stitching and sewing. So I am going to go around and sew. If you don't have a sewing machine or you're reluctant to use, you know, put cardstock through sewing machine. Uh, and also a lot of contact papers are different. Some will lift quite easily. This one kind of lifts there because I didn't press very hard there. So what I would do if I wasn't using a sewing machine, I would apply glue just to the edges to keep the contact paper in place all right sewn all the way around you can see that pretty pretty it would have looked nicer again if these were horizontal but they are vertical so now maybe we can just finish off with doing a little collage let's see hmm let's stick with contact paper random piece of cereal box cardstock and cover that in black contact paper
another random piece of cereal box cardstock and cover that in gold paper. Pretty cool. I couldn't help myself so I've sewn around. Okay, now a little stamped image. I'm gonna glue that on top of this. Maybe add a brad or two for a little bit of fun, just like so. And now glue this piece to this piece. Lovely, and now glue this piece to my journal cover. And done, my journal cover is ready. Now I can prepare a signature, bind it in and done. Maybe ink some edges and cover ready to go. Please let me know in the comments down below what you think of this contact paper project ideas that I have here for you today, what you think of the video and also what you think of the quick inspiration series that I'm planning to do. Is this something that you would be interested in on a weekly basis? In any case, let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.